So with everything coming out of Comic-Con and the fact that I know I'm not going to get to all of it, especially because, uh, you know, I've actually got plans for today, but um, I figured I wasn't really going to get a chance to talk about uh, Marvel and their TV stuff. But you know what? Uh, this is my channel. I can talk about it even if there isn't a lot of that coming out of Comic-Con. So Marvel TV stuff, we've had a couple of things happen. We gotten a new trailer for the Inhumans, we got a new trailer for the Defenders, and we got a little bit of word on Iron Fist going forward as its own solo series. So let's start with the Defenders. It is another good trailer. It reinforces a lot of what I liked about the first trailer. Um, I really like, given how much I severely disliked Iron Fist, I really like that pretty much all the other characters aren't taking him seriously and are kind of like, what is your deal, dude? And I'm totally down for that because if there's a character who needs to get dressed down a lot, it's Danny Rand. Uh, we get a little glimpse of Madame Gao. It looks like she is scared of Sigourney Weaver. And given how much I already like Madame Gao, uh, that is a... I, I'm down for that. We see Elektra, so we know she's factoring into this. That makes me slightly nervous because I didn't love Elektra um, as part of the second season of Daredevil. But you know what? Maybe they found a better way to use her. And again, they show her against Sigourney Weaver, and we get a lot of voiceover from Sigourney Weaver. She more than well, there's basically two things going to this that I'm like, okay, that has sold me. One is her. The other is that hallway fight they keep showing us glimpses of. I'm like that looks so good. If that can be the standard, the benchmark of the action scenes in this this is going to be a real good time. So there's not a lot there that we didn't already know. Now I want to talk about the Inhumans trailer because I didn't do a video talking about the first Inhumans trailer. I talked about it on uh, one of my podcasts, but I know the, the listenership is way lower than the viewers that I get on here. So I assume none of you heard it, but yeah, this looks bad. Like the one thing that I like, I even love, uh, I love that they're doing Lockjaw. I mean, just flat out, I love bulldogs. I mean, I do, I used to have one. And it's like, that's a, that's a real quick way to my heart is putting a bulldog up on screen. So uh, yeah, I love Lockjaw. We don't, I, I, wish, I wish the show was just called Lockjaw and we just follow this giant teleporting dog. That would be my favorite show ever. Um, but it's not gonna be that. Uh, and unfortunately, what it looks like it is gonna be does not look good. So what, I what I'm gonna talk about here is probably gonna mash up things from the first and second trailer because the second, the second one was this thing's chance to go, sorry we made a bad first impression, here's a better glimpse at it, which is possible. The la latest Justice League trailer has put a much better impression on me following a very lousy first impression. So, you know, I, I'm willing to give a second trailer a shot if I haven't been sold yet, but this thing just reinforced everything I didn't like about the first trailer. Um, something that I would have liked under other circumstances, I suppose, uh, the guy who plays Ramsey Bolton, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. I'll put it down here because I just know I'm going to, I'm going to screw it up. So I'm just going to refer to him as Ramsey. Apologies. He's a good actor. He deserves for me to know his name, but I'm a loser like that. So he is basically just doing Diet Ramsey here. I mean, it seems very obvious they brought him in to go, hey, remember that character Ramsey Bolton that you did on Game of Thrones? It was such a wonderfully hateable villain. Do that again. But here's the thing. That was on HBO. This is on ABC. This is going to be the PG-13 at best version of Ramsey. And I've already gotten uncut Ramsey. I don't need this watered down version. So I immediately lose interest in him as a villain. Medusa looks awful. I mean, she looks surprisingly comic accurate with the hair and they kept her color scheme. And I wish I could find that admirable, but it looks in such a way that it, rem it reminds me why, like back in the 2000s with that first X-Men movie, why they put all the X-Men in black leather and they were scared to death of depicting the costumes as comic accurate because it can look like that. But here's the big thing. Here's what really has shut down my interest in this. And that's this guy that they've got playing Black Bolt. Him, it's not even a matter of I can't pronounce his name. I can't even be bothered to remember his name. He leaves absolutely no impression on me whatsoever. He just comes across like a vacuum of charisma, like a black hole. He just any interest I have just gets absorbed and sucked and it's just it's gone whenever he's on screen. I think this really emphasizes why even though structurally I can I can envision the Inhumans as a TV show, movies was probably a better idea because to be blunt about it, when you're casting a TV show uh, especially a network show, which has a very rigorous schedule, usually 20 plus episodes, it's hard to get 
previously undiscovered high level talent that's going to pull off what you need your lead characters to pull off. And when this was originally being pitched for film, they honestly they would have had a better pick because the kinds of actors who can exhibit a lot of charisma and uh, and you know regalness without speaking and can bring all that across with just looks and with just their eyes that's a fairly short list and most of the actors of that caliber who aren't already undiscovered tend to work in movies so when this got moved to tv and the pool shrunk for who they could get this guy oh boy like you know it was the rumor for a while oh i bet they do vin diesel because wouldn't it be funny if you know a character who we don't see him he just speaks and he only says one thing but then the one time we see him he never talks like and honestly vin diesel could, could actually pull this part off in terms of just looking intense and looking um you know like like somebody to be afraid of just with the way he can look he can do that this guy cannot and what's more he seems to be trying to compensate for the fact that he's basically not allowed to speak by really almost doing pantomime i mean this he can't just stand there and look kind of severe he has to and, and it, like even exaggerated like the times he opens his mouth that like, oh gee yeah this yeah it's not good at all and he has to work he's so theoretically the lead i mean i suppose if he really doesn't sell they can shift who the lead is as the thing goes on but wow like very really nothing about these trailers impressed me but he really who i have no interest in this show right now so the one last thing I want to talk about with Marvel related TV stuff, Iron Fist season two is getting a new showrunner, which is good because the first season was crap, but it's also bad because it means we get more seasons devoted to Iron Fist. And as bad as the writing and the plotting and the dialogue and all that stuff was, that was not the only problem. A big part of the problem is Finn Jones as Danny Rand. And again, I'm not saying Finn Jones is a bad actor, but I wanted to slap him the entire time. Part of that is the writing, but part of that's the performance. And if we're stuck with him as that character, boy, they're gonna have to do a lot of work to make to bring me back on board. Because even if the writing gets better, if I hate the lead character, there's only so much better that this thing could get. And it had been my hope that in the wake of the reception of Iron Fist that he wouldn't get a flat out second season and they just shift him to, you know, showing up in The Defenders, being a supporting role in Luke Cage and basically do Heroes for Hire. That, that would have been very strongly my preference. I don't want to spend more time with just him. And it really doesn't do much for my enthusiasm because I don't know who this new guy is who they're bringing in to do the second season of Iron Fist. I guess he worked on Heroes Reborn. And, I mean, he's, he's working on stuff I haven't seen, so maybe he's good, but I don't know. I have nothing to base that on. But I mean, I'm glad they got rid of Scott. Oh, crap. How did I not make that connection? Scott, but they didn't get rid of Scott, but they moved him on to Inhumans. Oh, God. Now I really have no interest in that show. What? What? With the reception Iron Fist got, why would you keep employing this guy? I mean, props to you getting him off the, the franchise that he effectively destroyed, but why would you move him onto your new show that really is questionable its existence of the first... Oh, God. Well, that's a depressing connection that I had not quite made in my head. I think my brain was just rejecting the possibility that this guy was continuing to work on Marvel TV. Ugh. So that's my thought on the current state of what we know about uh, what's coming down the pike for Marvel television related stuff. Still pumped for the Defenders, Iron Fist can jump off a frigging cliff and zero interest in the Inhumans. So uh, that's where I am on those particular things. What are your thoughts on all this? Or uh, what Comic-Con stuff do you wish I was talking about that I'm just not, that I have bumped instead to talk about this? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher. I am also one half of the Punch Like a Girl podcast, also available on iTunes and Stitcher. And until next time, this council is adjourned.